I have a question for you. Do you fear the probe? Do you dare me? I know you want me to do it. Probes can be dangerous, but they can also be very, very useful. For popping balloons, measuring the temperature of meat or something else. And in Resolve, they can measure the value of something on the screen. I'm gonna track the tip of this probe to the screen. You'll see when I put it, move, or, move it over my hat where it's kind of white, we get a value. And as I move it around, maybe up where that shelf is, we get a different value. The shelf is gonna be closer to zero. My hat's gonna be closer to one. It's gonna get popped. You know it, it's gonna get popped. The Resolve probe measures the value of pixels on the screen. All right, checkerboard here. If we want to probe a value of something that's on the screen, this is an image. I'm going to show you how to do this in Inside of Fusion. You just put this, I'm going to track it. That's on the dark value. I'm going to move it down to a lighter value. This is a gradient. Got dark on this side, and we're going to move it over to light. I've even created a really crazy animation that uses lots of probes. Um, it's almost too difficult to set up on your own, but I have a, a program that's going to do it for me. And it can make something like this. It's looking at the values on the background to drive the animation. So you could have it go from left to right, top to bottom, or middle out, just by changing a pattern. It's a really powerful animation technique. I know you want me to do it, and I'm gonna, but I need you to subscribe to the channel. Push the button right down there. I'm watching you. You subscribed yet? Okay, if you're already subscribed, you're fine. It's the new guys. And we're gonna learn some great fusion stuff. All right, here we go. Pop. All right. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, let me know, put them down below. I would love to hear from you. Okay, it's time to do some probing. Now remember, we can take the Resolve probe and inspect any image. It can look at the pixel and we can take the value from that pixel and do something with it. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna add some text and then put a DVE node and transform node and that's gonna form the, the basis of the starting animation. We're gonna take a background node and put that into the node area and connect up the output and it's in our viewer. We'll take a text node and drag the output of the text node into background one. We're gonna change the name of the text node, hit, uh, hit it and select F2 and we're gonna call it text one. And let's adjust the text. So with the text one selected, hit control space and search for DVE. DV nodes are a lot of fun. They let you spin things in all kinds of directions. So um, with the DV node, we're going to be able to adjust the, the X rotation, Y rotation, both at the same time, as well as some Z rotation. So it kind of has a 3D looking spinning kind of thing. Now let's add a transform node. And this is, going to, this is what we're going to use to adjust the size, make it little or make it big. Hit uh, control space and search for transform and add that in. Transform has a size property. And this is where the probe comes in we need something to probe. So a black and white image works really good. Black would be zero and white is one when the probe looks at it. So let's start with that. We're gonna take a fast noise and put it in and we're gonna put that in viewer one and there's our fast noise. Um, let's add, bump up the contrast a little bit. We got those whites coming through and we're gonna to go to the color and take the alpha on the color one and bring it up. So we got some blacks and whites. It's time to add the probe. So let's click transform one right click size and search and uh, do modify with and let's find probe there it is let's select probe and that added this modifiers tab and you notice the size is zero because we're not looking at anything yet so we need to pick an image to look at and where to look at on that image so let's go to modifiers and you'll see that there's a channel the red channel we're going to go ahead and use that because um, that's going to give us a, a one to zero black and white value for this we're going to right click on image to probe and we want to take a look at the fast noise. So we're going to say connect to fast noise one output. And we could just type that in right there, but it's fast noise one. So whatever whatever's in this fast noise image is what our probe is going to look at. So how do we decide what part of the image we're looking at? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use, let's go back to the modifier, transform one and modifiers. Okay, so right now it's looking at, you see zero, zero. That's right in the center of the screen. And you notice that's a gray value. And we are, let's take a look at the transform and right there. And you'll see that the size is kind of right in the middle. It's right about 0.4, it's kind of in the middle. So let's look at a different part of this image. Right now we're looking right in the middle. So let's go to the transform one modifiers of the probe. And we're gonna slide it over a little bit 
right there and we're looking in the black area and you see that our text size went down to zero. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's take the position and move it. See, we got this green, this green pointer. This is what we're looking at right there. We're looking at that white part and that's going to set the size to one. So you'll see as we move the probe position around, we can just kind of grab it and look at different areas. Right there when it's kind of in the gray scale, it's kind of in the middle. And all right, like that. So what we can do is we can, we don't really need to animate the probe position. We're going to animate the fast noise to get the animation going. So let's go ahead and reset the probe position. It's at zero, zero, right in the middle of the screen. And now instead of moving this position, let's change what the image looks like at that spot. So we hit the fast noise and we're going to adjust the seethe. And that's going to change what our fast noise is looking like. And you'll see that when it goes to kind of a black gray area, it gets smaller. And when we keep going to like a white area, it gets bigger. And this is where you can adjust some contrast and brightness as well. A lot of different ways to do this. And you can just affect, change the seethe rate. And that's going to automatically animate this thing. And we have an automatically animating size property. You can see right here when we click on size, the size is changing as our image changes. So we're probing right in the middle and it's going from black to white, from zero to one. Okay, let's play around with the DVE node and see if we can use the size property to set up some automated animations. So as the size changes, some other things are going to anim animate as well. We're going to use some expressions to do this. So let's start out by going to the DVE node. We're going to right click on Y. We're going to, this is the Y is what spins it around like this. And we're going to say expression. And this is going to allow us to type in a value here. So what we're going to do is type in transform one dot size times 360. And what this means is it's going to, it's going to change from zero to the, the size is going from zero to one. So by multiply it times 360, we're going to have the Y value change from zero to 360. And now as we adjust our fast noise, not only is it getting bigger, but it spins in like that. So it gets small and then it spins in. And so as we adjust this, the size is adjusting, but also the DVE Y, y rotation is, is adjusting as well. So let's go ahead and adjust the X. So right click on X. I'm going to choose expression and this time we're going to go, we're going to set it to be one minus one minus transform one dot size. So that means that when the size is one, it's going to be zero. And we're going to multiply this times 180. When the size is zero, it's going to start out at 180. And when the size gets to one, it's going to go to zero. And let's see what this animation looks like. So let's take the uh, fast noise and adjust the seethe. And you see it kind of spins in. That's a little much. I'm going to do a little bit less on that one. Let's go to the DVE and let's put it at 90 degrees. So it's going to go from 90 to zero. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more text in here. So let's uh, take this up here. And we're going to slide this up. And this is, where, this is where we're going to actually need to change what part of the image we're looking at. So we're going to take the, uh, the DVE and the transform. We're going to copy those and we're going to paste one over here and one over there. And we're going to put the text into the first set and merge that right on top of the background. We're going to take the and merge it right on top of the background. We're going to take the text and put it into the second set on the right and we're going to merge that in right there. And then animation looks the same. So let's take this transform and we're going to take we're going to slide the center position over. We've, we're going to slide it over. Let's set that to 0 0.2. We're not seeing anything when we take a look at the uh, the output here. We should have some text over here. And the reason we don't is because if you look at this transform one, you notice that the size is zero. Anytime you copy the node, the image that you're probing gets lost. So we're gonna hit modifiers and you see where it has image to probe is gone. So we're gonna just type in fast noise one. And there we go, it shows up. So now that we know, we know which image we're probing. Same thing on this transform two, we're gonna slide this over and the text is still zero sized. So we're going to write, let's uh, set that to 0.8 and go to modifiers and image to probe is gone. So we can either type it in or you can right click, say connect to fast noise one output. And so now the probe is looking at the correct, the correct image. And when we adjust our fast noise, see that they all spin, but they're all spinning together. And the reason is because each of the probes in the transforms, there's three probes now, one with each transform. They're all looking at this middle spot. They're all looking at that middle spot right in the center at that 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So they're all gonna animate the exact same. So what we're gonna do, we, well, all we need to do is adjust the positions of the probes so that we're looking at different parts of this background fast noise image. 
So let's hit transform one, go to modifiers, and you'll see that it's looking at 0.5 and 0.5. So all we need to do is we're gonna to go to this transform and we're gonna right click on the center position and we're gonna say publish. Then we're gonna go back to the modifier. This is the position it's looking at. We want it to look at the transform one position. So we're gonna right click, connect to, and that transform and we're gonna say center. And you see right here, it moved the probe value to match where the transform is. So as we move this transform, the value of the probe changes. And that's because you'll see over here on the right, it's moving through these different grayscales. We're probing at the center of the transition. So let's go ahead and we're gonna set the Y to 0.5 and we're gonna set the X to 0.2. All right, and the next one is we have this one right here, this, this other transform on the right-hand side. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna right click and publish, go to the modifiers, open up our probe. We're gonna right click on the position and we're gonna say connect to and this time we're going to connect to transform one, two, center. So now when we do our fast noise, each of the probes is going to be looking at different stuff. So you see they're all animating differently. So what we've done is we've set up an animation where we can use the value of a fast noise or really any animation to affect lots of different elements on the screen. With one image, by adjusting the grayscale and some of the settings, we can adjust the entire animation. Let me show you how this works. So let's click on the fast noise, and we're gonna to go to the color area, and we're gonna set it to gradient, and we're gonna choose a linear gradient. So we're just gonna go from black to white, and it's kind of messed up right now, but we'll go ahead and click noise, and we're gonna bring the detail all the way down. And we got black right here. See, this is, this is the grayscale, it's smaller, and then right here, it's bigger over in the white area. So now we can adjust the color and we can take this offset. By sliding the gradient, we can have each of the text come in at a different time. Each of the text components is animating at a different time based on the value of the grayscale. We could actually set it to ping pong and adjust this pattern here and then do it. And they'll kind of they'll all be going to come up and down, in and out based on the pattern. You can really do this for anything you want. Um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna add a bunch more of these in and we're gonna play around. Give me just a second and we'll see what we can do. I added some more stuff in there. Let's uh, animate around and play with the gradient pattern to see what how it works. Um, you see what basically all I did was I added um, some more so we have a row of three by three. So three on the top, three in the middle, three in the bottom. So nine probes looking at nine different parts of this fast noise image. So what we'll do is we'll just take the uh, fast noise right now. I'm um, just show you as you can see as we adjust the offset. All of them are spinning. And because the, uh, this is a vertical, that each of those positions is going to be basically the same color. So let's mix this up a bit. So we're going to take the noise and bring up the detail a little bit. So we're adjusting this pattern. And you can see we have the, uh, the darks and lights. Now when we go to adjust the offset, they're all spinning around. So let's, uh, let's zoom out on this and take a look at what we have. All right, that looks pretty good. So anyway, you can really play with this pattern all that you want. So um, we could take it, we could make it, uh, for example, Let's go linear and we're going to um, take the detail down to smooth it out and we're going to go all the way from the top right down to the, I mean the top left to the bottom right. Go to the color. We're going to take, take it off. Um, yeah, take it off the ping pong and let's adjust the offset. So there's zero so we can slide it and you can see we have all these coming on from the bottom right to the top left. So all you really need to do is it, you can animate the offset or we could even really go in, um, let's adjust our noise pattern right here and we could just change the seethe rate and we're animating. Okay, that's, that's running a little bit slow right now, but hopefully you get the idea. If you have any questions, just ask me and I can try to help you out. Um, it's just looking at those black and white values with the resolve probe, looking at one of those little pixels on the screen and taking the value there and we're taking the value and using it for the size. Once we have the size, we can put that in some expressions to animate a lot of different things. This is the same technique on this generator thing that can put hundreds of probes on the um, screen and animate all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, it kind of looks like this. It'd be almost impossible to build by yourself, but with this uh, thing I'm creating, it'll generate everything for you. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit in this video, had a little bit of fun. Um, we got a lot more stuff coming soon. This is just a little sample of some of the things that I'm working on for future updates of some really interesting, really interesting apps. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you soon.